Welcome back. And I've got a really unusual experiment for you today and one that you can try at home. What we're going to be looking at is the diffraction of light. But first, a bit of a story. And uh, this is something going back to when I was very young. I can't actually remember what age I was at the time. But obviously, I was playing around with things like any budding physicist would, uh, not really understanding the physics behind it. Now, one of the things that I did, and this is going to seem really odd, but bear with me, is I was looking out the window and I was sort of blocking off the light with my fingers. And I obviously noticed that some light would get through the gaps in my fingers so I looked really closely and what I did was I closed up that gap in my fingers. I made it really, really narrow and I noticed something really, really odd happening. So I'm going to show you how to do that experiment today and we'll see if you can get it to work. And then we'll try and explain the really odd effect you get. So here I am at the window. I'm just going to hold up the two fingers, look through the slit here, close it down and close it down look through the gap and I can see the effect really, really clearly. So you've got the apparatus you need. It's a couple of fingers from your hand and you need to look out the window at sort of um, daylight, as it were, bright light. It works best. OK, now here's the odd thing. If you hold your two fingers up like that, and this gap here um, should form if you put your two fingers together. And it's a very, very narrow gap. Put it very close to your eye, look out the window and focus on the gap, not what's outside the window. So I'm going to turn to the window, look outside and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze that gap down with my other two fingers to make it really narrow. And I'll remind you, when you do that, look through the gap, focus on the gap if you can and tell me what you see. Now, I've tried this with my students and half of them go, oh, I can't see anything. And the other half go, oh, yeah, that's really interesting. It's a real lesson in observation, this and following instructions. So if you follow the instructions and observe carefully, what you notice is when you look through the gap. And I really hope you saw this was uh, you see the bottom of this finger and the top of that one. That is obvious. You see light coming through that two is obvious. But if you look really carefully between the two, you see horizontal black lines, horizontal black bars. Now, when I first showed this to students, they said, oh, well, that's obvious. That's your eyelashes getting in the way, which um, rather surprises me. And I said, well, OK, turn it through 90 degrees and see what you get. And the whole effect turns through 90 degrees. So try it again. And if you didn't get it to work, see if you can make it work this time and see if you can see your two fingers and in the gap, lots of black horizontal lines. And it's going to take some explaining to explain how they got there. Right, let's see if we can explain it. So what you're seeing here is a diffraction pattern, and that can only happen if light is a wave. Now, you don't normally see lots of black horizontal or vertical bars when you look at light normally or through the slots in the window or anything like that, because the gap is too wide. But if we make the gap very narrow, it approximates to the wavelength of light. In fact, it's quite a bit bigger in this case. Um, and if you have gaps that are getting close to the wavelength of light, you get an interesting effect called diffraction. And that diffraction pattern is also caused by interference of light waves. And it's that I'm going to try and explain. So now for a bit of an explanation, and I'm not going to do a really detailed explanation of diffraction. That's not what this video was for. So the first thing that you know is that light is a wave and it has peaks and troughs. It's important to explain this experiment because it shows the wave nature of light. The next thing to notice is that if you have a slit like this, the light can go through the middle of the slit and, for example, the top of the slit. And if you look at that carefully, if it goes through the middle of the slit to the back of your eye and through the top, the light that's gone through the top of the slit has gone slightly further. Now, if it's gone slightly further by half a wavelength's distance, then the ray that goes through the middle might arrive as a peak 
and the wave that arrives from the top might be out of phase and arrive as a trough. And those two are going to add together. And it's fairly obvious to show that if a peak meets a trough, those two sum to zero make darkness. So there'll be a point in the image where it's completely black. And this is the cause of the dark lines. So I have simplified a little bit here um, that obviously there's a bottom to the slit as well and there's light coming from there. So uh, the main point I was trying to make is there are places where waves come through the slit and arrive in your eye in phase, you see brightness, out of phase, you see darkness, back in phase, you see brightness, and they'll be at different positions in the slit. So what you'll see is a light area, then where the waves arrive out of phase, a dark area, then in phase again, constructively interfering, for those of you that know, light again, then destructively interfering. And those dark lines are very close together because the slit is actually very wide compared to the wavelength of light. But they're definitely there showing that light has arrived where the dark areas are, but it's destructively interfered because it's half a wavelength uh, out of phase and therefore you see complete darkness. So I hope you enjoyed that experiment and got it to work. Do let me know in the comments below what you saw and whether it did work for you. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon. So until then, really enjoy your physics and I'll see you next time.